Okay, I went ahead and cut one of these totally in half so you could see. We are. There's thousands of morel spores in here. And you know these 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 morels they're just they're just not as smart as they think they are. I mean, they might fool some people, but uh, not me. I get them. Yeah. What? What is that mess? Yeah. Leak tight. Keeps all the spores in. Yeah. That's what adds fuel to your fire. That's what keeps you going. Um, just is. It's what floats your boat. That's how it happens. Um, wet a few napkins, okay? And um, this will be a brief explanation as to why I do this, okay? Okay, anyway, I got a wet napkin in there, a couple wet napkins in there, and I put a lid on the bucket gently, gently roll them around. This bucket, okay, this this bucket has bazillions of spores in it. They get wiped, they wipe down the inside of the bucket. All those, all them sticks, leaves, everything, every bit of this will get balled up into to moist paper towels, okay? and put into that bag, okay? And these will be used later in a, what I call a sawdust block. You can't have my spores. You have to earn your spores. We'll get ready to go over how I make these spore blocks. Uh, a couple of things I use, flour, salt, uh, morel spores are in that bag, and paper egg cartons. And down in here, I got sawdust. Uh, I got table saw here, do some woodworking. And we got sawdust in here, to acts as a, a filler and a binder. Um, the flour and some water will mix together to make a glue to form our spore blocks. All right, so here we go. Oh, the water. I have a bait tank. I keep bait in that trash can right there. That's my bait tank. I keep bait in there for fishing. Um, so that water's um, not got any chemicals in it except for salt. It's in my bait tank. Salt salt help um, keep your fish alive. So add salt to that water. And we do you do want to put some salt in here. So you, you know, since you're making a moist, wet, um, uh, spore block at first before it dries. Don't want any mold and bacteria and stuff getting in there, taking over. So salt, salt helps prevent that. I've uh, got a bucket here. I'm gonna put some of that water in there. Uh, definitely probably wouldn't use tap water. Use some water from a creek or pond that's safe to handle. Maybe some distilled water, or whatever. But I wouldn't use tap water. I wouldn't think. Anyway, let's get them mixed up. First thing I gotta do is get some water out of the bait tank. Just gonna dip, dip some water out of here. Put a little bit in the bottom. We don't want too much, okay? Um, want to make sure we use, can always add water to this because uh, we're going to make like a glue and a binding agent. So you can always add water later to do that, but too much water, not a good thing. Paper towels and napkins and leaves and stuff in here that were in the bottom of my bucket as I collected morel spores. And so those have been sitting in this bag throughout three months of winter. Now we're going to mix these up. Wondering how I do this or what the process is to gather these up. You can go back and watch the videos from early in 2023. Um, throughout them videos, I talk about collecting morel spores. We're gonna get this stuff out of here, okay? There's leaf material in here, um, paper towels and napkins that I wiped um, things down with to collect the spores. Uh, a couple other paper bags in here for, that were um, holding morels. Some plastic bags that have morel uh, mushroom residue in them, okay? Um, there's uh, yeah, there's actually some whole morels in there, and I'm sure there's bazillions of spores in in these couple um, plastic bags that I got here. So bags that have morel residue in them. At some point, these were holding morels. Dump on all that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and dip it in the water. And give us some sloshes and get some more of them spores out of there. 
Okay, I'm going to reach in the old spore bag here and just start pulling stuff out. we got all kinds of goodies in here. Probably only going to do half of this, okay? This is just all material that is holding spores. So go back and look, see how I do that. Um, go back and watch the videos from early in 2023. There's, there's uh, dried morels on there, paper towels and napkins that you can see the discoloration. They were wet collecting spores. There's just old dried up mushrooms that I let go. Um, they were probably old ones in the woods that I picked and just let them go ahead and dehydrate out in my bags. Some leaf material, Go again, go back in the video. I line the bucket with leaf material to catch those spores as I'm collecting. There's all kinds of, there's a lot more morels in here than I thought there was. All these little black dried up things, these are all old dehydrated morels. I'm gonna get this mixed up and done and then get them dried as quick as we can. Um, within, a, within an hour or so. We don't want all this stuff setting in water and too long and creating mold um, or maybe even damaging the spores. Got, you want to get this done fast. You got to have time to do this. You got to get it done. Go ahead and add some, some salt in here to help preserve everything and keep bacteria out. Okay, look, we've let this uh, material soak here for about 10 minutes and uh, go start hitting it with the old, uh, the old hand wand, hand mixer, okay? Whatever these are called, one of those. Gonna start breaking all this down so we get uh you know almost like a paste okay we've got that broke down into where it's pretty much a paste just a gooey a gooey mess okay um gonna start adding sawdust to it okay so we got about two inches of this paste down in the bucket uh, it's about two inches deep and we're gonna add just equal parts of uh, sawdust or some kind of a, a material Okay, some type of a natural woody type of a material, but I uh, just want to give it, have it, give it a little more, give it a little more body. Okay, kind of equal parts, equal parts there on that. Hey, okay, for the flour, um, we're going to add enough flour in here till we um, just kind of coat everything. Okay, and then we're going to add more water to this to make a glue. Okay, I've just been steadily adding a little bit of flour to this till I get a uh, pretty, pretty firm dough here. And uh, that'll dry up pretty, pretty hard. And uh, again, we're not trying to um, take this and put it in our yard and grow morels in our yard. We're taking these spores, these spore blocks to places where morels are naturally already going to produce. And we're just, uh, we're going to amp them up, help amp, amp up the production for them. We're taking mushrooms that were spread out over miles and miles and taking, capturing the spores from those mushrooms that were spread out miles and miles. And we're putting these in a specific spot where this stuff's going to slowly break down and deteriorate and fall on the floors for right where you want them. Some people say, well, why not just make a water mixture with your dry spores? Well, I'm trying to create, recreate nature. Who knows when the best time is to put that water down. These are going to break down slowly over time in the woods. And as wind and rain catches it, um, and these spores are going to fall and hit the ground at different times of the year. So Mother Nature is going to help us with that. We've got bazillions of morel spores here. And we're taking these, these uh, precious little balls of, of morel dough here. And we're putting them in the woods exactly where we want them to be. Um, the best way to do that is a place where you're pretty sure mushrooms grow or you found them in the past and we're going to amplify the situation. We're going to increase the odds. So here's where the egg cartons come into play, okay? We're going to take this this mess that we've made and pack it into these egg cartons, okay? And um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it like this. We'll pack them in there, let them dry, and then we'll we'll cut out each, each little um, mold individually. All right, so this is an easy enough deal here gonna grab a wad of this mess and pack them in there we got these these uh, guys propped up got two fans blowing on them um, one getting up underneath them real good another one blowing across the surface of them get them dried out okay if this don't look like a bad 
fourth grade science experiment. I don't know what it does. This has about 24 hours of drying on it so far. Um, they're pretty hard, but it's still a little soft down in here around the carton, just a little bit. Um, after about 24 hours or so, or just keep an eye on them or whatever, if you don't have, I'm going to have the luxury of using this table saw here to cut these up with. But if you don't have something like that, um, a good pair of scissors can cut through this while the spore block is still soft, while the material inside is still soft, or a knife or whatever, or, you know, do what you got to do. I don't know. But yeah, we're going to cut these up into small blocks. Okay, I went ahead and cut one of these totally in half so you could see see what it would look like here. But pretty much got a piece of particle board if you know what that is. Piece of I mean it really is. Anyway, cut them up into these smaller pods. And they're gonna need another good uh, you know, I don't know, another two days on the fan get them good dry and rock solid okay after your spore blocks good and dry i go ahead and drill a hole through them okay right through the center and punch a hole through them make a little pilot hole to receive a nail i nail these to the trees uh, i think that's a lot safer than hanging them from a string or whatnot and having an animal get tied hang tangled up in a string but yeah i just drill a hole through them it's just a uh It's just a pilot hole, okay, to receive a nail. I just use little finish nails. Nail them right to a tree. Here we are. There's thousands of morel spores in here from collected over a couple thousand mushrooms collected 300 miles apart, okay? There's, there's thousands of spores in here, and we're bringing them back to the woods and distributing the woods.